All right, well, good morning, everyone. It's good to see you all today, and it's great to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. All right, so let us begin by just uh, closing our eyes and bowing our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, dear Lord, thank you, God, for this wonderful, beautiful day that you've created, Lord. Um, thank you, God, for bringing us here together in your house of worship, Lord, to uh, for us to be able to fellowship with one another, Lord, to worship you, God, um, through song, Lord, and um, through the reading of your word. Heavenly Father, dear God, thank you, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ, uh, for sending your only son, Lord, um, to pay for the penalty of our sins through his blood, Father. And thank you, God, for the victory that we have, Lord, through your son, Jesus Christ. Victory over sin and victory over death. Uh, through the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, and through his resurrection. Heavenly Father, dear Lord, uh, please forgive us, Father, for any sins we may have committed, Lord. Uh, any iniquities in our hearts, God. Please forgive us, Lord, for uh, our wrongdoings, Father. Uh, and Lord, please continue to guide us, Lord, to lead us in your righteousness, Father. And please continue, Lord, to teach us your ways, Lord, through your word and our fellowship with you, God, through through prayer. And Heavenly Father, dear Lord, thank you, God, for, for sustaining us throughout this week, for giving us uh, strength uh, to go about each day. Thank you, Lord, for providing for each and every one of us and for our families, God. Thank you, Lord, for your promises uh, that you have for us, Lord. Thank you, Father, for never leaving us and never forsaking us, God. And Heavenly Father, dear Lord, we'd just like to also pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are unable to make it this morning, God. Lord, please be with them. Please comfort them, God, uh, if they're in a time of need. Father, we pray for your healing grace and mercy upon them, Lord our brothers and sisters in Christ, God. For those who are struggling, Father, with any uh, sickness, Lord, we pray for your healing grace and mercy upon them, God. Please be with them, Lord, and give them strength. Heavenly Father, dear Lord, please be with us as we worship you today, Father. Lord, we thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit that works within each and every one of us. You continue to work in us each and every day, God, and we thank you for that, Father. Lord, please open up our hearts as we sing songs of praise and worship to you, Father, and help us let go, Lord, of every worry, uh, every concern that we may have, Father. And may we just leave all those things to you, Lord. Thank you, Father, again for this day. Lord, please be with uh, um, the praise and worship team, God, as they help, as they uh, lead us into worship, Father. Um, and worshiping and serving you, God. And we pray for your wisdom and guidance, Lord. Um, upon pastor as he delivers your message. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness in our lives, God. Thank you, God, again, for never leaving us or forsaking us. And as always, Lord, thank you for the victory that we have through your son, Jesus Christ, in all things. And with all these things, as always, we pray with thanksgiving and gratefulness in our hearts. In the name of our Lord and Savior, 
and your precious son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Um, so today, right after the service, we have our vacation Bible school planning and workshop uh, here inside the church. And in loving memory of Edith Manahan Crasco, uh, we're going to be celebrating uh, her life and celebrating uh, her journey, her eternal life um, with the Lord. There's going to be a memorial service for her on Sunday, February 25th uh, at 4 p.m. And you can just join us here at the church um, at 4 p.m. And for our tithes and offerings starting today, our offerings to the Lord will be collected by uh, our ushers during the worship service. And with that, let us begin as we praise and worship the Lord together. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the First Baptist Church of Port Wainimi. And before we start, can we all please stand up and let's read this verse out loud together. So in Psalms 145, verse 8 through 11, let's read this out loud together, everyone. The Lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people exalt you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. And as we sing praise to the Lord, and this, is, this verse honestly is just a reminder that every single person here matters. He, every single person is always just there for us and as we just praise him for his for all the things that he's done for us let's sing praises to the lord Sing what gift of grace. What gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness, and freedom. My steadfast love, my deep and boundless. I hope, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine, I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. night is dark, but I am not forsaken, for by my side, my Savior, he will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need, his power is to this I hold, my shepherd will defend me through the deepest valley. this I hold. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend me through the deepest valley.
this I hold to this I hold my hope is only Jesus all the glory evermore to him when the race is complete still my lips shall repeat yet not I but through Christ Still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Last night, yet not I. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Isaiah 63, verse 7, I will tell of the Lord's unfailing love. I praise him for all he has done for us. He has richly blessed his children because of his mercy and constant love. Deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that He should give His only Son to make the wretch His strength. How great the pain of searing loss The Father turns His face away As wounds 
which mar the chosen one. Bring many sons to glory. Let's all sing, Behold. Behold the man upon a cross. My sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mocking voice. Call out among the scars. My sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast. in anything no gifts no power no wisdom but I will boast in Jesus Christ his death and resurrection should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. What should I gain? Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. But this I know. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. But this I know. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins and has given us life. The life that we enjoy right now, Father, is because of your grace, of your goodness, and your mercy. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of eternal life. And the assurance, Lord, that someday we're going to see you face to face. But as we go on with our spiritual journey, Lord Jesus, we thank you so much, Lord, because you promise that you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us. That in times of our challenges, in times of our needs, we can always rely fully on your presence and your grace upon each one of us. Our Father, we thank you for the privilege of giving this morning 
to come together to worship you this morning in spirit and in truth. Lord, you promise in your word when two or three gathered together in your name, they're in the midst of them. And we acknowledge your presence, God, and the working of the Holy Spirit in our midst as we worship you, O God. We come to you, Lord, asking that you purify our thoughts, our hearts, and our minds. And if there's sins in our hearts, Father, we ask for forgiveness. We ask for cleansing. Because we're standing before you, our holy God. And you said in your word to be holy, for I, the Lord your God, is holy. So God, we stand before you, Father. We just pray that you purify our thoughts. Forgive us, Lord, of our iniquities and make us right before you. Because our desire is to know you, to seek you, and to glorify, honor you, Lord Jesus. We're so grateful, Lord, for your faithfulness, God. Thank you for sustaining us throughout the week. Thank you for healing us, Lord, and giving us your mercy. Thank you so much, Lord, for taking care of our children. Thank you, Lord, for just providing our needs, keeping us safe even in the midst of storms that we face in life, God. We thank you so much, Lord, for your presence. And this morning, Father, we just want to offer our lives to you, Lord, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to you, Lord, as our way of worship and thanksgiving. You deserve our praise, Lord Jesus, because of your faithfulness in our lives and because of the grace that you have given us and because of your love. So, God, we offer our lives to you, Lord Jesus, desiring to know you, desiring to grow in our, in our love for you, Lord Jesus. Bless our time together, God, as we worship you. Cover this place with your precious blood and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit work fill in our midst as we worship and glorify and will honor you, Lord Jesus. We set aside the needs and concerns because we trust in your provision. We trust in your grace. We trust, Lord Jesus, in your healing mercy upon our children, upon our families, God. We trust on your unfailing love, Lord Jesus. So we thank you so much for your faithfulness. And as we worship you, Father, may your name be glorified. May you be exalted, Lord Jesus. And we bring back the glory and the honor to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. For him this morning is desiring for us to be above of everything in our lives and we trust the Lord because he is our rock. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. I like this part. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live it by faith. In the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. It's by the grace of God that we live and we exist and we receive blessings after blessing. And God desires for us to be on higher ground and, and pressing on to upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. So praying as I onward run, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. So we are desired.
was high and catch a glimpse of glory bright. But still I pray till heaven I've found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. My fate on heaven's table land. A higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high. At this point, we're going to be um, collecting our offerings before the Lord. As we worship the Lord, not only we worship Him, we adore Him, but likewise we give to the Lord our gifts and talents and uh, service to the Lord. And uh, we'll be distributing or collecting our offering before the Lord this morning. Let's go in the ashes, please. Come and let's pray. Our Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for the privilege of giving to you what belongs to you, God, our tithes and offerings. We thank you so much, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness and your provisions in our lives. And even as we give to you, Lord, our talents, our gifts, and uh, the blessings that you have given us, Lord, that you bless it for your ministry and for the church you have given us, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we offer to you, Lord, this offering, Lord, that you bless it, Father, and uh, multiply it, Father, for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. While we're doing that, let's call on our kids to please come. Children, we're going to be praying for you. So you can proceed to your children's church. Come on, boys and girls. Hey. All right, all right, all right. Any more kids? Come on, so we can pray for you. Welcome. Kids are precious before the sight of God, and it's a blessing to have our children, but we desire for them to grow in the Lord. And thank you, parents, for bringing your kids this morning, and we just pray that they'll continue to grow in grace, in the fear and the knowledge of Christ. Let's pray for them, please. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you because you've given us these children, Lord, in our church. We thank you so much, Lord, for just allowing them to be here, Father. We know that you have a purpose for their lives, God. And we desire to be part of it, Lord, by praying for them and encouraging them and teaching them your word. That as they learn your word this morning, that it will stick to their hearts and their minds, that they will continue, Father, Lord, to love you and to grow in their faith in you. Bless their teachers, Lord, will be teaching this morning that you give them wisdom and knowledge, Lord, as they uh, teach these kids about your word. We love you, God. We bring back the glory and honor to you. We entrust them to you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may proceed, boys and girls. <coughs> See you later. Good morning. We thank the Lord for this day. We so grateful because this week actually has been a sunny day, especially this Sunday. We thank God for his faithfulness and his grace. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm glad you're here this morning. Amen. 
because some of you haven't even said hi to one another yet. But it's a good time for us to really praise God and honor his name. And uh, we're learning a lot about the word of God, right? One of the things we should desire as we worship, not only we sit down there or sing praise, but likewise make sure that God speaks to us in a very personal way. Do not leave the church without the word of God implanted in our hearts or else you're going to be wasting your hour here in, in today's worship. But at the same time, this will normally what the word of God we hear on Sunday becomes our, like, an, an, a nutrient, a, a, the, the, our source of strength as we go along throughout the week. And we thank God for the privilege of learning the word of God. We're still actually working on the, the, the serious lesson on stepping stones to God's heart. Our desire is to obey the Lord, but at the same time, to know the very heart of God. And through these Psalms of Ascent, we're studying actually the 15 Psalm of Ascent and learning actually a lot of things. Uh, we're learning how to grow closer to God as we seek to meet with Him every day here on earth and eventually in, in eternity in heaven. So as we study the uh, some of us said, we're learning how to grow. We're learning how to grow in the Lord, closer to the Lord. And even in our, pre in our spiritual journey, in the spiritual journey, every day we're being closer to the Lord until the time we're going to see Jesus Christ face to face. God's desire for us is to grow in our faith. God desires for us in our spiritual journey. There will be problems, concerns, storms along the way. But God wants us to be firm, trusting in the Lord. Last week, we looked at Psalms 123, right? And uh, which was all about looking to the Lord for mercy. We learned that last Sunday. We're, we're, last Sunday, we learned about in Psalms 23, it's about looking for the Lord and trusting the Lord for his mercy. We claim and we ask for the mercy of the Lord in our concerns and our problems. We, we ask for the mercy of the Lord. And in some, in, in some ways, Psalms 124, okay, serves as an answer to Psalms 123. Psalms 123 was cry for mercy, and Psalms 124 describes God's merciful deliverance. Psalms 23, at Psalms, Psalms 124, 124 is all about depending on God, Okay. David wrote this passage, and it mentions about how he depend, depend upon the Lord. And Psalms 124 is all about depending the Lord or complete dependence on God's help. In our journey, we need that. In our spiritual journey, we need that. Psalms 124 is about depending on God. The Psalms point entirely to God and his help, and there's no stealing the glory for oneself. Open your Bibles with me to that psalm, Psalms 124, and let's read this passage and observe how David actually mentioned um, his dependence upon the Lord. And what are the things that he desires for us to, to know or to accomplish as we depend upon the Lord? Psalms 124. I like this verse, actually. Follow along. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel say, if the Lord has not been on our side when people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive when their anger flared against us. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. Praise be to the Lord God. Praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird from the floral snare. The snare has been broken, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. May God bless his word. Shall we pray first? Our Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for this time that we could pause and listen to a still small voice. Give us wisdom, Father, as we understand your word, and that your Holy Spirit will work in our midst, in our hearts. Bless your message, Father, and your messenger. May your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, as we begin the message this morning, let me ask this question. Was there time in your life 
Was there a time in your life when you were completely dependent on God? A time where if God did not come through for you, you were, you were sunk, depressed, or go under? Was there a time in your life that uh, you're, you're completely dependent upon the Lord, that if you're not, you're, you're definitely would sunk and depressed and go under? There are times in our lives that we, without God, we see how things go south. There are times in our lives that we, if we don't talk to the Lord or we don't turn to the Lord, things go rough and we lead to desperation and we go under. That if God didn't catch you, you would surely fall. It's easy to point to the times of crisis as times when we are specially dependent on God, but the truth of the matter is this. We are all completely dependent on God all the time. Do you agree? We are all completely dependent on God all the time. We need God. We need Jesus Christ. We need him every day, and we need him for all things. In Psalms 124, Psalms 124 imagines what would happen if God did not intervene to help. Psalms 124 imagines what would happen without God, and it is a picture of a complete devastation or destruction. We did not escape from trouble because of our own skill or ingenuity but because God intervened to help. Amen? The reason why we are successful in everything that we do, because we know that God was there with us. And that's what Psalms 124 says. We did not escape from troubles because of our own skill or ingenuity, but because God intervened to help. The very heart of Psalms 124 teaches us that we can depend on God and that we must depend on God if we want to make it safely to the other side of our spiritual journey. Psalm 124 giving us a message that we can depend on God and that we must depend on God if we want to make it safely to the other side of our spiritual journey. So David mentioned this one, that he depended upon how the Lord blessed him. So the Psalms 124 teaches us that we can depend on God and that we must depend on God if we want to make it safely to the other side of our spiritual journey. And the teaching and, and in, in teaching us to depend upon God, Psalms 124 encourages us to do three things. And I want you to learn this one. There are three things that God, Paul, Psalms 124 encourages us to do as we depend upon the Lord. Number one, affirm the difference God makes in your life. First thing is that, so let's take a look at the first, the first thing here. We need to affirm the difference God made, makes in your life. By affirm, we mean we have to make known, we have to confirm, we have to acknowledge that God, with God, things are different. We need to affirm the difference God made in our, in our life. As we, as we depend upon the Lord, we need to affirm that the difference that God makes in your life. And this is what's in verses 1 to 5. In verse 1 to 5 says, If the Lord has not been on our side, let Israel say, If the Lord has not been on our side, when men attacked us, when their anger flared against us, they would have swallowed us alive. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent would have swept over us. The raging waters would have swept us away. I like you to observe the first the first line. Here, the psalmist actually encouraged all the Israel to affirm the difference that God makes. The key word in this section act is the word "if." "If" is a tiny little word with big implication. And here, the ifs focus on what might have happened if not for God. What might have happened if not for God? If the Lord had not been on our side, we would have been destroyed. 
Notice the phrase, if the Lord had not been on our side, is repeated actually. And this is for emphasis purpose because the second time it is spoken, it is an affirmation of the truth that indeed, without God, we cannot do accomplish anything. In a different translation of this verse, in the, in, 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 in the, in the Bible, in the Message Bible, translate it this way. All together now, Israel sing out. Okay? Okay, everyone, let's all sing it together. And it says, if the Lord has not been on our side, we will have been destroyed. If the Lord has not been on our side, we would have been destroyed. The psalmist uses actually this principle, knowing the fact that if without God, we won't accomplish anything. And that we should reaffirm every day as we depend upon the Lord. The psalmist uses a striking flood imagery here to the highlights of this, and, 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 and this, in this verse. The psalmist says, if the Lord has not been on our side when men attacked, they would have swallowed us alive. The flood would have engulfed us. The torrent swept over us. The raging water would have swept us away. Actually, this imagery is not, it's not slow rising of water causing flood damages in our home, but rather this is a flash flood. The way it was mentioned here by David, it is a flash flood or tsunami where the rushing water swallowed you alive, sweeping you and everything else with it on its path. What David is saying here, sometimes problem will come and that it's like a flood, a raging flood. If the Lord has not been on our side, it would have been all over. What J David's saying, but it's not, not all over. We survived the attack, and the bottom line is that we're still here. If God is on your side, what difference that is does it make? It makes all the difference. And the psalmist knows that. He remembers that. He acknowledged that and encourage all the Israel to affirm it with him. That if, if, God, if the Lord's not there, we'll be in big trouble. And that's something we need to affirm daily in our lives. As we depend upon the Lord, it should always be in our hearts that without God, I'm nothing. It's good to review God's past deliverances, and even all the might have been in order to give you confidence for the present and hope for the future. So the first section of this psalm should prompt us at least to ask two questions. Where would you be without God? Where would you be without God? What would you, where would you be with, what, what would your life be like if God has not helped you? If God has not protected you? If God has not saved you or changed you? In John chapter 15 verse 6 says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. And then, apart from me, you cannot do nothing. But Paul, what David is saying here, where would you be without God? Do you believe that? That without God and Christ in your life, you could do nothing of a lasting value. Galatians 6.3 says, if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he de deceives himself. If you think you can navigate life successfully without God, you are deceiving yourself. You might say, well, I've gotten along fine without him so far. But have you really? Have you gave... Who gave you your life? Who gave you your job? Who gave you your wisdom? Who gave you the strength that you're having right now? Who gave you life? Who showers you with the blessings every day? Are you going to take the credit for all those things? Where would you be without God? Secondly, if God is for us, who can be against us? The second question is that, if God is for us, who can be against us? What a comfort it is to know that if you are in Christ, then God is for you 
He is on your side. In verses 1 and 2, in, go back to verse 1 and 2 and look at the phrase. Let me see that. It's not there. It has been on our side. In the original Hebrew, that phrase is actually the past tense of the more familiar word. Language is a bit there. In verse 1 and 2 is the word Emmanuel, which means God with us. When God is with you in life, that, means that, that makes a difference. When God is with us, we don't need to be afraid anymore. If God is for us, who can be against us? And that affirms us as we depend upon the Lord. In Psalms 118, verse 6 says, The Lord is on your side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The idea in Psalms 124 and in, he, in, in Psalms 118, verse 6, is why fear that which is made from the ground or dust when you have God on your side? We are on the Lord's side, and that's something we need to be praising the Lord for. Romans 8, 31 to 32 says, What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son. He gave him for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? If God the Father gave up his son for you, you can rest assured that he will give you everything else you need in your life. So how do you acknowledge your complete dependence on God? By affirming the difference God made in your life. First thing that, God, that David's mentioning here, as we depend upon the Lord, we should always affirm, remind ourselves of God in our lives. Without God, we're nothing. That if God is not for us, who can be against us? The truth is that where would you be? Where would us be without God in our lives? So God decides, first of all, to affirm the difference God made in your life. As we depend upon God, and this Psalm 124 says, as we depend upon the Lord God, our help, let us continually affirm the difference that God does in our lives that God is faithful, that God is for us, then who can be against us? Now, secondly, secondly, in our dependence upon God, David helps us, uh, gives us number two. We should praise God for his protection and deliverance. Not only we need to affirm his goodness in our lives, not only we need to affirm the difference that God makes in our lives, but secondly, God decides for us to praise God for his protection and deliverance in your life. And we can see that in verse 6 and 7. Verse 7 said, Praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. We have escaped like a bird out of the fallen snare, and snare has been broken, and been, we have escaped. The second principle is the second phrase is here is that Praise God for his protection and deliverance in your life. In our dependence on God, not only we affirm what God is doing in our lives, but secondly, in our dependence upon God, we should praise him because of his protection and deliverance in our life. Here the Psalms move from what might happen to what actually did happen. In verse 6 and 7, God not only delivers us from the potential danger, he also delivers us from the present danger. What David is saying here, first of all, he protects us when we are in danger. We need to praise God as we depend upon the Lord that God protects us when we are in danger in verse 6. We praise God for his protection, for protecting us when we are in danger. In verse 6 it says, praise be to the Lord who has not let us be torn by their teeth. Here the psalmist changes the, blood, the flood imagery to a wild animal imagery. The picture here is of the wild animal attacking us and tearing our flesh. And psalmist says, God did not let that happen to them. The Bible actually is full 
of God's promises as we depend upon the Lord that God will protect us from those harm. The Bible is full of God's promises to protect his people. In Isaiah 43, verse 2, it says, When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over, over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Or we could go back to one of the early Psalms of Ascent. Remember when we started with 121, 121, verse 7 and 8 says, where it says, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over you coming and going both now and forevermore. That God, we should be thanking God as we depend upon the Lord. We should be thanking God because he protects us from all dangers. Life is a spiritual battle. And as Christians, we are not exempt from this battle. In fact, God puts us right on the front lines. As Christians, we must be ready to experience persecution. We must be ready to suffer for our, for our faith. In verse 3, it talks about anger of the man who attacks. There are times in our lives that we'll be attacked as believers in Christ. But because we trust God, and reminding ourselves that he protects us. Guess what? People get angry to the believers in the Lord or get angry even at the church. They get angry at you when you speak up or stand up for the truth. But take heart because God is on your side. He protects you when you are in danger. Secondly, God rescues us when we are trapped. Verse 7. God rescues us when we are trapped. In verse 7 says, we have escaped like a bird out of the flower snare, the snare that has been broken, and we have, we have escaped. So the imagery shift to trapper and the snare. And so we actually have three images here that David uses, the flood, the wild animal, and the snare. And the psalmist has escaped all these three. It's the, the, the great escape. He has escaped the raging water from the flood. He has escaped the deadly jaws of the wild animals. And finally, has escaped from the trap of snares. So notice how God actually protected David and how the Lord protected us. And behind that, we should be thanking God for his goodness in our lives. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, God is faithful. He will not let you tempted beyond what you, go, you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that we can stand up under it. So in, when the devil trapped us, we can always overcome it by the grace of the Lord. What does God do when we are tempted? He provides a way out. He breaks the snare so you can escape. So in our trap, God will be the one to protect us. And, but we need to praise God for that. So the good news in Psalm 24 is that what might ha what, what have happened, it didn't happen. What might have been trapped of sin of life, that didn't happen. We might have died without Christ and gone to an eternity in hell, but that didn't happen. And the reason it didn't happen is because of God. God makes all the difference. God helps us against all the odds. And we can praise him for that. So secondly, as David's mentioning here, because we depend upon the Lord, we should always affirm his dif the difference that we have from the Lord, the difference that he gives us in our life. And secondly, we need to praise God because of how we depend upon the Lord. The second application of this verse that we praise God for his protection and deliverance in our lives. And thirdly, we praise God. Or we tell others how God has helped us. In verse 8, God tells, we need to tell others in our dependence on God for help, let us tell others how God has helped us. The third actually is an application of how we depend upon the Lord, and that is to tell others of God's faithfulness. In verse 8, our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And this verse actually connects us to Psalm 121, where it says, Our help comes from the Lord, the Maker. Again, the Lord, the word there is Lord, 
The Lord there is Lord, R-O-L-D, capitalized, referring to God himself. Our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And Psalms 124, our help is in the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord here is Yahweh once again. God's covenant name that speaks of his character, his faithfulness, his presence, and his attribute. First thing, God gives, give God the glory for what he has done. In our dependence upon the Lord, we need to praise him for what he has done. Tell others, let's praise him for what he has done. In Psalm 115, one says, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but your name be the glory because of your love and your faithfulness. Also, encourage others to depend on God's as well. Encourage others to depend on God's too. So give God the glory for what he has done and then encourage others to depend on God as well. God can use our testimony to encourage others to recognize their need for God, to understand that they are completely dependent on God, that they cannot make it without God. Psalms 20 verse 7 says, Some trusts in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. We depend and trust the Lord. So, that's the principle here that Psalm 124 is saying. We depend upon the Lord that we affirm that daily. We thank the Lord for that and we encourage others as well. Too many people trust in their own abilities when they need, they need to be trusting in the Lord. There was a story about Muhammad Ali who was on a flight on a plane once. And the stewardess told him to put on his seat belt. Ali told the stewardess, Superman don't need no seat belt. And the steward replied, Superman don't need a plane either. <laughs> We're so overwhelmed with the things that we have that we tend to neglect our dependence upon God. How many of us think that we are superhuman or superman that we're in con that we're invisible, that we don't need God's help. We need God daily. And this is especially true when it comes to our salvation. We need God. We need the Lord for eternal life. We think that we're really pretty good people, that we don't need God, that we can make it, make it to heaven on our own. But the Bible is very clear. Salvation is found no one else, but there's only one no other name under heaven given to man which must be saved. Salvation only comes to the Lord Jesus Christ. But we need to encourage others to depend upon the Lord, not just for the struggles, but as their salvation as well. I was working on this sermon, I, and I, I, I got this quotation that says, if you do not depend on God, you will end up in a deep end. The very heart of Psalm 124 teaches us that we can depend on God and that we must depend on God if we want to make it safe in the other side on our spiritual journey. And God and the Psalms encourage us three things to, to affirm the difference God made in our life. God is good to us. And we should see that. We should see that. We should see how, how we, we survive because of the Lord. But at the same time, we need to praise God for his protection and deliverance in our lives. But at the same time, we tell others how God has helped you. The bottom line is this. I was trying to get the whole gist of this. God decides for us to depend upon him. We depend upon the Lord. But as we depend upon the Lord, make sure that we always remind ourselves, it's not us, it's God. We should always remind ourselves that he protects us and that he delivers us and that we need to praise him for that. But at the same time, we need to tell others that God helped you and helped them as well. We are, we are com actually, we are completely dependent upon the Lord. And what a difference God made in your life. If the Lord has not been in, your si in our side, we would have been swept away. 
If the Lord has not been on our side, we would have perished. If the Lord has not been on our side, we would have been trapped. If the Lord has not been on our side, there would be no hope, no deliverance, and no salvation. But I can testify to you this morning that everything, everything good in our life, we owe it to God and to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can assure you this morning that you can depend on God. And that's what this David, David is saying. You can depend on God. In our spiritual journey, as we look forward to going to the house of the Lord, as we look forward in our spiritual journey, we can always depend on the Lord. There will be challenges, there will be storms, there will be problems that we face, but we can overcome that. God is with us. God is, as we depend upon the Lord, God will want to protect us. And we can assure this morning we can depend upon God. He has never turned anyone away that comes to him. When we walk in obedience to the Lord and we trust him, the Lord will be guiding and protecting us. We can trust him in your life. And we need God and we need Jesus Christ. The point is this. One, Psalm 124 is giving us the assurance that as we trust in the Lord, as we depend upon the Lord, God will be there for us. In our challenges, in our concerns, in our struggles in life, in our spiritual journey, as we depend upon the Lord, then we are sure that God will be the one protecting us. I don't know what's happened in your life, but since the start of 2024, there's a lot of boom, boom, boom situations that we face. And I said, Lord, what's, what's happening? And, um, and I don't know what's in store for us. But one thing for sure, that we can depend upon the Lord. We can trust him. And we should affirm that daily, that God makes a big difference. When we are in with the Lord, it makes a big difference, and we trust in the Lord. And God will never leave us, but rather he will protect us. He will deliver us from any harm. He will deliver us in our lives. But at the same time, God decides for us to tell others as well of God's faithfulness in our life. We are not alone. We can always trust in the Lord. Complete dependence on God's help. As we face the year 2024, as we face challenges in life, we can always fully depend upon God in our life. How do we do that? By daily trusting in the Lord by daily obedience before the Lord, by daily praying. Do you pray this? Did you pray this morning? Whenever your faith is concerned, do you pray hard? Do you allow God to work in your life? And that's what God, David is saying here. We can depend upon the Lord. We can trust in the Lord in every challenges that we face. And that's a good assurance for us. Amen? We can be assured that we can depend upon God and that he has never turned anyone away that comes to him. And we can trust him with our lives. And we need God, and we need Jesus, and he will never leave us, he will never forsake us. Shall we pray? Our Father, we thank you for reminding us. In the life of David, Lord, and the Psalms 124, reminding us, Lord, that we can fully depend upon you, Lord. That we can be, we can trust in you, Lord Jesus, to trust and obey. And that there be concerns that we face in life, but you will always be with us. Help us, Lord, to always affirm the difference God can make in our lives, God. That you'll always find us, Lord, thanking you and praising you because of your protection and deliverance in our lives. But at the same time, allow us, Lord, to tell others of your love, of your grace, and your faithfulness in our lives as well. But above all, Father, we thank you for the assurance that we can trust in you. Thank you for the assurance, Lord, that we can always seek you, we can always find rest in you, and that in you, Father, we can find answers to our prayers and our concerns. Thank you for your word, God. There are a lot of things that has been mentioned, but above all, Father, we just want to thank you and depend upon you, Lord, and trust in you. Lord, you know our heart's concerns, you know our problems that we face, you know our challenges, Father, but you remind us, God, that you are faithful and that we can always depend upon you, Father, for what you can do in our lives, and that you will continue, Father, to protect and guide us, Lord Jesus. And God, we just want to say a lot. We love you, and we ask for your mercy and your grace to continue to work in our lives, Father. 
in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we stand? In our journey in life, in our challenges, we can always depend upon the Lord. But at the same time, it's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Amen. Our Father, we thank you so much, Lord, because we can trust in you. That we can depend upon you, Lord Jesus. In the midst of our concerns, 
in the midst of our challenges. We thank you. We could we can depend upon you, Lord. Lord, you know our heart's concern this morning. You know our needs. You know our desires. But first of all, Father, we desire to know your will and purpose in our lives to obey and to trust in you, Lord Jesus, and to rely upon your mercy and upon your grace and your goodness in our lives, God. Lord, you have reminded us, Lord, to depend fully on you in our spiritual journey, that you are always there with us, Lord, protecting us and guiding us, Lord. That you, your strength, Lord, is the one sustaining us, Lord. Your provisions in our lives, God. But help us, Lord, not to give up in our concerns and our needs, but to trust in you fully, Lord. To focus our mind on you, Lord Jesus, because you're the author and finish of our faith. And that you'll be done, Father, Lord, to work things out according to your will. We dedicate to our lives this morning, Father. We entrust to you our needs and concerns. We entrust to you our lives. And Lord, allow it, Lord, to experience your presence and your working in our lives, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your word, that you bless your words into our hearts and minds. And as we did this place, as we go back to respective places, Father, may you find us, Lord, always looking up to you, trusting in you, and depending upon you, Lord Jesus, in our everyday life, Lord. And thank you for your word, that you bless your words into our hearts and our minds. And we ask that you will seal it, Father, with your Holy Spirit, so that even as we leave this place, that the faith that we have in you continues on, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your word, that you bless your words into our hearts and minds. And keep us safe as we go back to respective ways, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy And amen. God bless you all and always depend upon the Lord's working in our lives. Amen. God is good.